Well, thanks for joining me, people. This is uh, an old topic, but I thought I'd do a video on it because I tend to make my videos a bit more sort of explanatory for those who struggle to follow maybe other videos. The subject is bringing DJI batteries out of hibernation. Hibernation is caused when they're not charged for a while. They basically just like the shut down protection mode. Now, this method works on the Mavic 2 Pro Zoom, Mavic Air 1, Mavic Air 2, the Mini 2, the Mini 1, the Spark, and the Mavic 3. Those are the ones that I know about. Uh, it also works on the Mavic Pro, but you will have to pull the battery apart. This is the Spark battery. Now, this is actually working, but I'm going to show you how it all fits together uh, in the video itself. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is this, the CP2112 debug board. Uh, £8.50, but if you have a hunt around eBay, you'll find them cheaper. If you go on AliExpress, you'll find them even cheaper. Now, some of the pictures you'll see will show you with the board, uh, with these little pins uh, already soldered in place. I haven't found one yet that comes with the pin soldered in place, so you will need some minor soldering skills. Now, you don't have to use the pins, but I think it does make life a bit easier if you use these. These are called DuPont jump wires. Relatively cheap, they have a socket at one end and pins on the other, and the socket just clips into these here. Again, um, not necessary, you can just solder straight to the board if you want to, but for ease and uh, neatness, I think this is probably a better idea. Last and most important thing we're going to need, of course, is the software. It's called DJI Battery Killer. It is available on the web if you want to go and find it yourself, but I will put a link to a Dropbox or Google link uh, in the description box below. Best thing about it, if you click the help button, you get the little section here that tells you all the connections that you need on the various batteries that it currently supports. We're going to be using the Spark for this. So let's wire up this uh, DJI Spark battery. Now you'll see in the right hand side there, I've got the picture showing where to put the wires to. So for instance, ground is the one marked with a little minus sign. So I'm going to put that into there like so. See how handy it is having these pins. You can just slide them straight into little sockets there like that. And then the next one is going to be the SDA, which is the brown. And the SDA goes on the right side of the battery as you're looking at it. So I'm going to just pop that into there like that. These pins do sometimes have a bit of a struggle to put in. There we go. That pins in. And then the white one, the last one, which is the STL, goes onto that side of the battery like that. And it just pushes in. He oh, says bending the pin slightly. There you go. That's all now connected up. So now it's time to actually work the magic. So take your board, plug it into your computer. You should hear it beep, like so. Go into your battery killer software, and we're going to click on connect. You'll now see all the various things here have filled in. And if you go into log, you can see it says adapt successfully configured. We're going to click on the button mark read info. That's now read all that. If at this point you get an error message in the log file, uh, it means the battery doesn't have enough power. Uh, I had this with the two hours recovery. I've got this big 12 volt battery here which worked great. Literally just connect the plus and minus into the plus and minus of the battery. Others have said you can use a little square 9 volt battery. If you've got a bench power supply you can use that. Either way, hook up the power supply, give it a couple of minutes and then try again. Once that's done, we're going to click on unseal FAS. And it'll say chip in FAS set 1. We're going to click on the clear PF, clear PF successfully. We're going to click on the PF2. It says PF2 is not active. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Once you've done that, we're going to reset the chip and then we're going to seal it. And that's it. It's all done. That's finished. That should now work. There is something else you can do in this software. Not that I would recommend you do it, of course. Whilst you are in the settings here, if you come down to capacity and voltage, you'll see this box here. Click on read values, and that will fill it all in. Now there's a thing here called cycle count. Now this is the amount of times this battery has been charged. Now, if you're selling your battery, it's got 99 charges on, chances are it's probably not going to sell. However, you could lie, and you could change it to whatever value you want. So all you need to do is change it from whatever you've got. Let's change it to 10 and then click on write values and then that value is now 10 as opposed to 1. I'm not saying it's something you should do, I don't think it's quite kosher that you would obviously change the cycle count, but you could do. Don't forget whenever you've finished always reset the chip and then seal it back up again. And that's it, that's how you reset the hibernation mode on pretty much any uh, DJI battery.